Hi everyone, that's Dora Tapalitska, International Nail Artist and Educator here. And today I have prepared another amazing design for you. Have a preview of it in here. Perfect for the summer days and I'm sure your clients will really uh, love those type of designs. Uh, if you do recreate this look, hashtag Dorota Palicka on the other social medias uh, as I would love to see your designs too. If you're new in here, don't forget to subscribe as there is lots of tutorials coming up every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. But also there's a hundreds, like really hundreds videos uh, which you can go back to and learn all different techniques, structures, nail art and lots of lots of useful information. So let's start. show you uh, what we will create today. A super cool and easy summer designs I would say but very effective. Uh, I have decided to go for a matte look uh, this time for a change and I've got the tips ready. Also with tips guys you have uh, asked me to do it on the smaller tips because you would like to see it how it does fit on the clients. You also have choose a smaller size of the tips. Uh, I hope you are pleased with that. So we are going to start doing the ombre first and I'm going to use 237. That's some nice blue. And I want to do it like all sort of different uh, kind of ombre, ombre look. So this one is going to go on the side. So I'm putting on the one side, I'm putting the blue and then on the other side we are going to do it maybe those uh, 200 sugar rush. I think it's an amazing color. Um, for the summer as well. Okay, and when I'm going to do the ombre, I will use the sponge technique. So I've got some sponge in here, um, which is already cut, and I'm using the uh, nail for form to remove any uh, particles of the dust which might be on it. And then we are going to blend these colors in. So I'm just dabbing with the sponge to get a nice ombre. Okay, and this way I've got the first layer of the ombre done. If you wanted it quite pigmented, um, what you could do it is apply the acrylic powder clear over it. It can be like any acrylic powder, so just apply it in. Tap to remove the excess and then put inside the lamp to cure it. Okay, on this one we will go for for some sugar rush, more of it, and then maybe yellow. And actually blue as well. Why not? And blue. Ideally, I want to cut a fresh piece of the sponge for each ombre. <laughs> and the sponges I'm using, that's just like a Primark sponges. Uh, they don't need to be like, an, I don't know, super expensive sponge. Uh, any kind of uh, sponges are going to work pretty nice for it, as long as they don't have lots of holes in them. Okay, so for this one, actually, I'm trying to use one sponge for as many ombre as possible. So I'm going to cut it, it all the way up in there. And then I've got about four sponges out of one. <coughs> and 
Uh, if you've got a very small piece of the sponge, so you don't touch the product, like I suggest you use some uh, tweezer to hold it, remove any particles. You can see it, I have got some loose particles in there. Uh, you don't want that, okay? So like make sure they are all gone properly and then we can blend this one out. So I keep blending the colors. You're kind of tapping into it until you're really happy with the results. And what's happening in here, we have got quite a few uh, different colors uh, in there and that's how your sponge looks from the back. Sprinkle it in with the clear acrylic powder. Tap it in and cure this one too. Okay, the first one is ready. So what I can do is I can remove the excess of the acrylic powder and then using the sponge, I can go over it again. And you can see it now, I even didn't introduce any extra gel polish. Uh, I had quite a lot of leftover on my sponge and I'm just really massaging it into the tip. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with it uh, for the design we, which we want to create. Um, so I can put this one on the side and then I'm going to quickly do another ombre on this one. Let's maybe use it a mint color now and some yellow. Mm, so I want mint on the bottom. You don't have to do it at, like straight. Um, you know, for these designs, like we can play as we like. Uh, I quite like it when they are slightly different. And then the yellow one. <clears throat> Our dog just came in. He's walking so loud on the floor. We called him Inspector Gadget <laughs> um, because he always walks in like really like what is going on in there. Um, so I'm using the another sponge to blend this one out. If you use darker colors, like more neon, like I have been using more of a pastel colors, but if you would use darker colors, uh, you could get a quite nice result just in a one go. Um, um, so that's quite handy. Another thing is I may actually guys show you as well because you have asked this question quite a lot. So sprinkle it. You have asked me how would you do it on the client? So obviously without of touching it. So let me show you. And then I just wipe it clear uh, my hands. So um, that's the sponge. And when I'm working on the client, you pull their nail folds down and you're touching, like the edge of the sponge doesn't touch any skin. Okay. So like you can go even higher. You don't touch the skin because here is no product with the sponge. There's no product. And then same on the other side, you would work like this. Okay. So this way you don't touch the, the client. Um, Obviously, I'm working with the blue over the blue. Um, there we are. So this way, you've got your product there and you can easily go without of touching the client's skin into the corners. Then going to the other side again, pick up the clean edge. Like see, clean edge all the way down to the bottom of the needle. If you find it, it is quite difficult, guys. Uh, you could... Um, you could uh, put some um, liquid tape, um, latex um, on the client's nail folds, but I find that this isn't an issue at all. Like at all, you know, you can easily do that because you've got clean edges of the sponge as well. Uh, my nails are quite shiny, so the ombre wouldn't be really strong because they are shiny and we always work on the matte surface. Okay, so I hope I have explained it that well <laughs> to you. Uh, let me clean the excess of the pigment and not pigment, acrylic. And then one more go over it. So sometimes you don't have to even um, reapply the gel polish. You can just dab it in of what you have got left on your sponge. and then cure it. And this one was the colorful one. So 
uh, there was also another good question. It was like, how do you clean the sponge? I do not clean the sponge. Um, I would just keep it on the forms like this. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> and normally I would uh, use it at like maybe two or three times and then just bean it. Um, so each sponge um, will be for a specific type of ombre or specific colors. Uh, and that's it. I love this one actually, it's so nice, so nice color. So we have done it in two layers, um, which is awesome, obviously. And then we can move on into the next step. So our next step is to use some blooming gel, because that's what you guys requested, uh, some blooming gel designs. And that's the blooming gel, which we will use. And then on the back of the, uh, actually I will get my mixing palette just get it ready so blooming gel and I apply it it you can do it on the entire tip or you could do it on some parts so see maybe on this one let's do it on some parts only so I'm trying to do it only on a blue and purple and don't do it on the pink one as much and again you could use different colors uh, I'm applying nice and thin layer of the blooming gel um, you could use different colors. I quite like it with the white uh, and we are going to use 173, which is Tic Tac white. And this design guys looks super cool. Like even on its own, uh, I love it for a summertime. Dotting tool. And then with the dotting tool, we are going to do some dots and you can make them um, all sort of different sizes. Uh, here I'm going to use quite large, like the bigger ones. And then for the other designs, I will uh, do it smaller. And what I'm trying to do it is I'm trying to place each dot kind of in between. Okay, so for this one we're doing large dots, quite large. And I think that's plenty. I'll leave it alone on the side so the product can work and give us nice design. Um, you basically leave it until you're happy. Uh, you can see it how nicely it spreads and creates the beautiful design. Okay, this one is ready as well. You can remove the excess acrylic pigment. And then blooming gel. For this one, because it's such a colorful one, I want to do it, all of it. So nice and thin layer. Try to don't apply it too much at the edges when you're working with the client. And then here I'm going to do it, the dots may be slightly different. Like really random. and then leave it alone. You can see this one looks so super cool. Like imagine if you would do it blue and yellow, it would be like a wave uh, and the and, um, ocean. We could create really nice design. I'm going to cure it because I'm happy with this one. And then another one. Apply the blooming gel. Then again, I'm trying a different dots placement. You can be all different sizes or you can be like really precise and spend ages on, on trying to uh, perfect the dots and make them like really equal. Um, I find that those designs are quite uh, cool when I do just go like very quick with it and I'm not bothered how I'm placing them. Um, and then leave this one. So this one is, I'm quite happy with it. Look absolutely fantastic as well. And then give it a cure. So let's maybe let, leave this one like not as spread. I'm going to cook it too, just to show you all different options. Oh, this is super cool actually. 
I love it. Now I don't like to work on the blooming gel because it has it makes the gel to spread uh, quite a lot so um, for the next step um, I'm going to apply the top coat just to make the life easier for me uh, otherwise your gel polish would kind of spread quite uh, quite a lot the design and I don't like it. I'm trying to apply it as thin as possible. Um, when we're doing those kind of layered uh, designs, I suggest you do make the base of the nails a little bit thinner because we, we, we're going to use quite a lot of different layers of the nails uh, and then that might be visible. Okay, matte top coat over this one. And sometimes, guys, I'm, I'm going to show you something as well, because even if we apply the... Gosh, this beep is annoying me. Um, sometimes, if, oh, I love this one on its own. Like, I'm not going to cover it much with the design, because I do really love it uh, on, its, um, on its own. Uh, it looks super cool. Um, so I will do just like a very minimal design over this one to don't cover it. But what I wanted to say is... Sometimes you ask me guys like, oh, can you just put the matte top coat without of buffing and things like that? Yes, you can do everything. The reason why I'm doing something is maybe because I want to get like a slightly nicer results or, or I'm maybe more fussy about something. Um, so this is a matte top coat. Any kind of top coat, I like to remove the inhibition layer, even if it doesn't have the inhibition layer. Like see, same the um, no wipe. Uh, high shine top coats um, they cure with no inhibition layer left uh, but there is always still a tiny bit of the residue left and I could basically paint it because it's a nice matte surface but even if so I like to give it a couple of the scratches because what it does is it smooths we've got few different layers of the products uh, it smooths the surface and this way you get even nicer uh, perfect nails it doesn't take long and sometimes it's worth to uh, worth to do it okay so that's just like a wee tip but you don't have to like the only reason I'm doing it is I want my designs to be more photogenic like and and I'm I'm just fussy Okay, so like, I don't know, I can see it like here isn't in, is maybe a wee imperfection there or something. And that's why I'm just giving those couple scratches to smooth it out even more so everything looks prettier. And then the last one. I love them just the way they are. Like, oh my goodness, it's so nice and colorful. Okay, so this one I feel is a little bit bulky, so I'm just going to buff it on this side a little bit more and then that's me happy. Okay, let's move into the next step. So next step is to, we can do some uh, leaves and shells and um, I'm going to use the colors which we've got in here as well. So um, let's me do maybe some here. On this one we will start it with this one we've got those uh, green leaves so I'm going to use like mint leaves I'm taking a scoop of the mint just a wee tiny scoop of the mint and I'm going to place a wee leaf in there Make the leaves nice and thin. It looks super cool on the clients, uh, those type of designs. Like my clients love it, those, uh, I call it jungle nails because there is so much uh, stuff going on in there. And if I would be working on the client and I would be really fussy, like I'm not the fan of painting with the gel polish because the gel polish spreads more, um, especially when the temperatures are quite warm. Uh, what I suggest you guys do is you paint it on the one nail, then you flash cure it for a couple seconds and you go into another finger. Uh, this way you get also much nicer 
results. <clears throat> so on this one, I'm going to do the pink. So just a drop of this pink. It's violet pink, like I, sugar rush is called. <laughs> and I'm not happy how the sides took. Um, so when you're painting the designs also afterwards, place your things on the places you are maybe not happy with. Because that will give you a much nicer finished look. I'm trying to pick up a very tiny amount of the product. Then once I have painted one side, I like to prolong those leaves so they look nicer. Okay, then the other side. Uh, those leaves, I'm placing them in between, so I wouldn't place exactly in this height. I, I'm going to place it there. And then this one, I need to hide this spot which I didn't like and the last one just in there clean the excess of the product from your brush and then just drag it so we've got a beautiful uh, I love it I'm actually going to paint another one Sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, until I see the design. Sorry guys, for the thin lines I need to just be quiet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I would decide as I go, you know, sometimes with the things, because I, I will see it like uh, how the design looks so far, and then I can decide, hmm, that's so pretty. I can do it one more or I can see it like, oh, that's plenty, don't do it anymore. So in this case, I'm sure like you can guys see it, it looks really nice. Um, but this one is much shorter, not as big. Honestly, guys, you need to, um, if you are just starting the nails, like you need to master those leaves because they look amazing. Like, and there is so many different ways of incorporating the leaves designs into the summer, um, summer nail art. I'm going to flash cure it. And then this one is sorted. So... I love actually the darker one. I'm going to place it... No, I'm going to use blue this time because we had some blue in there. Blue, where are you? Where are you here? So the blue was 237. Spiky blue. It's a really nice blue. And... I'm going to do it the leaf which runs from here and then goes wavy up to there. And then prolong it. Again, depending how um, quick you are, you can get a nicer results or not as nice results. Um, with this last one, I'm actually painting as fast as possible which is sometimes not a good thing. 
is always not a good thing. <laughs> Because then the designs aren't as pretty. So it's always better to take the time. Oh, I love this one. Like, I don't want to spoil it too much because I love it. it and for the next step, we, which we, um, we do, we will use the white French gel. So I'm just picking up a scoop of it. Let me put it on the side. Okay, just a small amount of it. This one lasts ages, like the, the um, gels from the pots last you ages. Um, they really so highly pigmented that you need just the smallest amount ever. And what I'm going to do it is imagine this is um, a, a water and then we're going to have some shell in here. Okay, so I'm just going to take a drop of um, some yellow and mix it with my white, just with the gel polish, just a small drop. You want like a dirty white. And then we are going to paint those shell in there. So it's almost like a rounded shape with a wee peak at the end. And then just color that in. And then just a small line on the bottom. Obviously the shell doesn't look anything nice yet, but as always, it's all about the detail. So here we are going to do a couple of the white, maybe not, oh gosh, yes, I'm going to do white dots. Okay, oh, I love those dots, they're cute. And um, give it a cure, because that will be our design um, almost finished. We just have to add those 3D element into it. Okay, here I'm going to add some white leaves. And I quite like the bottom, I'm just going to do them on the top. Look, that's my brush. Um, it's not loaded with the paint. Like I do have really little product and each time I'm just picking up a small amount. If you do have too much product on your brush, you are going to paint really thick lines and really thick design. Also, you are going to lose the control over your product. So what I'm doing, I find that this is the quickest way to paint the leaves. And then I'm just dragging them. Dotting tool. And some dots. I think those dots uh, enhance the design. <coughs> and then here we are going to paint like a wee starfish. So I'm just dragging a product into one center. As you can see it, when I'm picking up the product, I'm trying to pick up like a wee blob at the end of the brush. Can you see it? And then 
we've got a wee star. This one is finished. I wouldn't add anything more into it because I don't want to overdo it. So again, cook it. And then on this one, on this one we could do it some leaf in here. Just a wee tiny one. And then pretty long those leaves. Dots. And some more dots. And let's do, I like, I really like actually those shells, so I'm just going to paint another shell. Maybe just slightly bigger. Okay, cook it. Now is the time to top coat the designs. So I, I decided to go for a matte look on the entire design. So we top coat it. And of course we need to do it the 3D uh, effect on the shell. So I'm just going to show you that. Because the three, uh, 3D we don't want to top coat it. Oh, it's so cool. Actually, I could do the star um, 3D as well. I should have done it at the end. I might do it on another one. See, sometimes you get the ideas as you go again. I need to find the sensor so it doesn't beep <laughs> because it's annoying. I promise for the next video I get rid of that sen of that beep. <laughs> okay, let's do the shell. So that's it, matte top coated. And now for the shell, I do really suggest you take your time. So when you're working on the client, swap the hands as well. And I'm using the, um, the white French gel, okay? Because it's okay to be used with no top coat for a small uh, parts of the designs. So I, I pick up a, like a tiny amount of the product, maybe a little bit more with a tiny wee blob at the end. Press it hard and then gentle. Hard and then gentle. Okay, in this way we have created like a really beautiful shell with the 3D effect. Try to make this line like really nice and thin. Uh, it's super pretty. Give it a cure. <laughs> those beeping okay so here what I'm gonna do I should actually do this uh, star as well those yellowish color then the white would stand out even more I'm just going to add a couple dots can camera see them yeah. fantastic And then we've got kind of 3D. Oh, 
Oh, you peep one more time and I'm going to throw you behind the window. <laughs> Please don't. Oh. Okay, the shell design in there. I think it got scared. No, it will beep again when I put the tip inside. If you're working in a very warm um, pantry, <laughs> unfortunately it doesn't happen in Scotland, um, you could flash cure it, like do couple lines and then flash cure it. Um, that's a wee tip for you guys. So here is another wee star. And couple of the wee tiny dots. Okay, I need to cure it everything. And now when it comes to the curing time, um, if normally I cure the paint, uh, the, the French, uh, the paint on gels for uh, 60 seconds, if I want to leave it, it with no top coat over it, so there is no protection, give it a double cure. Um, this way, like the design is going to stay on. Uh, so for a 3D effect, like we, we want to, I might actually guys show you something as well, because this is the same technique I have used it actually uh, obviously this design is more advanced. I'm thinking to do the training uh, on it. Uh, so we've got the, the gel here as a 3D look as well. Um, you can see it like as a, it gives those 3D effect. So we can do it. Um, and, I, and I use it a lot in a salon, like uh, sometimes clients don't want really raised, um, raised results. So, I do it uh, with the uh, with this gel, and it's awesome. Obviously, like um, you cannot do it too much at the one time. Uh, you have to do it like a little thin lines. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking also to do the um, separate training uh, for those kind of more advanced designs. But anyway, let's see full collection of that summer tips which we have created today and I really enjoyed it and I will be doing it a lot in a salon for a clients because I think they are super cool uh, so look at this one like it's so pretty the French gel has a tiniest inhibition layer ever uh, so I suggest you just wipe it give it a wipe like to remove those inhibition layer and also you remove the inhibition layer from the matte top coat as well it's super cool and you can see it as like really nice and 3d uh, design Let's put it, it into the collection. I love this one actually. I'm going to put it in the middle because I love it the most. I have um, colored my display case with some gel polish and it's now is quite cold so the blue tag doesn't stick and well to it. Um, but I'm just going to show you another one, so clean it. I love actually this star as well. I like it, the fact that we have done those um, dots because it does look more of a free 3D. And the last one, obviously for a picture, I will have to make it much nicer. I'm just try to don't waste your time when I'm taking out the tips and I'm just, yay, <laughs> cameraman is laughing. Oh, it's ugly, like it shouldn't be like this. Um, but Oh my, I love them. See, the colors even don't go, like this should go probably maybe here. This maybe, the, yeah, I need to swap them about. I will think like which way to, to take a picture. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that's what we have created today. I hope you have really enjoyed it. If you did, hit the share buttons pretty, pretty please. Uh, so we can get to this 100,000 subscribers. I'm sending you lots of glittery hugs and bye for now. Mm -hmm.